Official Jets podcast is presented by WinBet. Betting is a team sport. Bet together at WinBet. Eric Allen here in Arizona with Jets head coach Robert Asala. You are looking refreshed. Uh, a little bit. Yeah? <laughs> get some sun. <laughs> get a couple rounds of golf. Get, get a couple rounds of golf. Uh, had a good one on Saturday. So what did you think about the league's presentation uh, last night? as we look ahead to 2023 and beyond? I, I always think it's fascinating. I, I, it's only my second one, but I'd, uh, even last year, just taken back at how forward how forward thinking it is and uh, how far, how they're so far ahead of where the uh, trends are. And Big picture, what does it say about the Jets as this organization that a future Hall of Fame quarterback, a four-time NFL MVP, says not only does he want to play in 2023, but he wants to play for the Jets? You know, they want to be here. You know, just the conversations that we've been having with guys, it's, um, I think people recognize it from the outside and uh, what what the, the guys in that locker room have been able to accomplish over the last two years and the growth that we've had. and. Uh, so there's a lot of excitement around the organization. Again, there, it doesn't mean anything because we still got to get to work and we still got to attack our moments. But uh, but to, to change the narrative from same old Jets and and being used as a, a talking piece or a leverage piece to get more money from somebody else, it, guys are coming here taking a little bit less, and it's uh, just to be here. And uh, I, I think that's cool. But, uh, again, it, none of it means anything. Uh, we got to win football games. Have you had a chance to reflect on how much progress this team has made since you were hired two years ago? Maybe for a second, you know, but, you know, you're, this league is year to year. Um, as much progress as we've made, and, and I get it, the wins haven't, uh, haven't been what we wanted, but I, I, I do think that, you know, anyone who's watching our tape can see that the wins are about to come. And, but at the same time, everything can flip back to what it was two years ago. Uh, if you if you just if you take your foot off the gas and become complacent, so. Can you talk about some of the changes here we've seen in the spring in the wide receiver room? That stands out to me. You get McCall Hardman Jr., a, a four-three burner, and then Alan Lazar, 6'5", 227 pounds, and no receiver who's lined up for the Jets since 1970 has been taller than six five. No kidding. A yeah. um, couple guys equaled that height, like Brandon Marshall. <laughs> yeah, you know, with Corey and Lazard, two guys that are just big, strong, physical, really good in the red zone. Um, obviously, we know about hopefully Mims takes another step. I think are going to have a really add a guy like McColl, elite field vision with the ball. He's got ridiculous speed. Um, you know, there's things I know wants to work on and things that we're going to commit to him to make sure that he gets better at those things. But uh, uh, really excited. Whenever you add, it, it's so easy to get. And uh, you add that to your roster, who it's just easy to get the football in their hands and they're able to create on their own. It's, it makes coaching easy, and uh, it makes everybody's job easy. So just really excited about getting him. His mindset, his mental makeup is pretty cool, and uh, uh, we definitely are excited about him. Not only was Rodgers glowing in his praise for Nathaniel Hackett, but Alan Lazard said he was the best teacher he's ever had, whether that was in football or in the classroom. What can you say about Hackett's connectivity to the players and how important of a hire he was for you? It, you know, we, I, you know, I was, I, during the interview process, I, I think I've said this, I, I interviewed over 20 guys, and um, it was just so clear to me that he was by far the best candidate that we, that was available in my eyes. Now, obviously, that doesn't mean that the, the rest of them weren't any good. There's a lot of really, really good football coaches. But for us and what we're trying to accomplish and the things that I believe in with regards to connecting with players and, and making sure that you do everything you can to help them feel like they can walk on water, just the teaching, the uh, minimalistic approach in terms of just less is more to allow those players to be athletes, to allow the athletes to be athletes. And I mean, you look at our staff, you know, and, and the things that he's doing, how innovative he is with regards to changing our presentations and changing the way the players uh, absorb information and and have, you know, suggesting that we hire a gentleman. Uh, you guys will see it on our on our website. It's an uh, instructional designer, you know. So there's there, uh, John Vieira. But um, so he's um, he's fantastic. He's uh, he's a forward thinker, and uh, uh, we're very fortunate to have him. Where are you at along the offensive line right now? Dwayne Brown toughed it out last year playing with essentially one arm. Max Mitchell did some good things his rookie year. He's on the men. And Makai Becton looks fantastic in all those workout videos he's been posting. Still got to work on. But, um, you know, you look at I, I see Dwayne every day. 
and it's uh, I I made mention. I feel like I need to ask him what he drinks, uh, what type of water he drinks. He's he's uh, he's incre he's incredible. He's incredible. Uh, how far along he is in his rehab, uh, it's it's amazing to me. And um, Makai looks fantastic. Uh, excited for him to attack this, uh, continue attacking the offseason the way he has. Um, I mean, he's, he, I'm just seeing the pictures. I haven't seen him in the building, but I have seen pictures, and you know, you get the reports on where he is mentally. I'm excited for him as a person before anything else. Uh, Max Mitchell will be will be just fine. He's going to continue to grow, and uh, Ver Tucker looks fantastic. And so, yeah, there's there's still stuff along the offensive line that we've got to address. And uh, again, there's still free agency and there's still the draft but uh these are all things we're studying defensively how huge was it for you guys getting that quincy williams deal done before free agency actually started because you talked about the importance of basically running it back on that side of the ball last year i thought he had a good year um i think he can be a heck of a lot better um his kind of length speed and violent i think he's top five in the through those three you know with regards to speed as a linebacker and his and the way he hits i mean it's like a, a freight train when he hits people um and so there's stuff he, he has to improve on but he erases a lot of issues because he's got so much speed and length and violence to his game and uh so we're excited to get him back excited to continue to work with him it's excited to get him to hone in on his skills and uh, uh he's only going to get better how about him and mosley the only linebacker pair in the National Football League to each record 100 tackles the past two seasons. Third Jets linebacker pair to do that since 2000. So uh, those guys, uh, keeping those guys intact is very nice for you. Oh, absolutely. CJ, I mean, I, I, I can't speak enough about him. Uh, you know, to, to get back to the Pro Bowl, and I've said it before, he did it differently because he didn't win the fan vote. You know, and uh, it was he got to the Pro Bowl and it was a starter at the Pro Bowl because of his peers, uh, which is the the ultimate accolade in my mind. When you draw up middle linebacker and you think of guys like him and Fred, you know, Fred Warner, Bobby Wagner and all the great ones that we had, Paul Puzlesny, he fits right in that mold. Uh, it's an unbelievable locker room character, loves football, works his tail off. Um, the ultimate teammate, and uh, just we're very fortunate to have him. Is Chuck Clark going to be an ultimate teammate? I mean, oh. you're talking about a guy who never comes off the field. He wasn't happy last year because they drafted Kyle Hamilton, signed Marcus Williams at free agency. He requested and, and, a trade. And he, and he still won the job. Yeah. It, it, it <laughs> put his head down, never came off the field, defensive signal caller, and also 2022 Walter Payton Man of the Year, so he's going to go out and help in the community. So yeah. No, he's, uh, again, the it goes back, you know, people talk about culture and they throw this word culture, culture, culture. Well, what's culture? Culture is the culture is about the people you bring in. And, uh, you know, Joe and his staff and along with communicating with the coaching staff, we've we've brought in a really, really cool group of guys in that locker room and we'll continue to do so. All right. L let's end here. Um, two years ago, you come in and you and Joe knew of each other, but really didn't know each other but but now you guys have been in the bunker together for a while and everybody on the outside i think is seeing this thing being constructed that's why there's so many people at your table nowadays um how much have you enjoyed working with him and how much are you excited for what's ahead um i love joe d because he you know one of the hardest things to to do in this league is to operate in humility and um because you, you you know this this profession, especially when there's success, there's this disease of me factor that jumps in, where a lot of people are just they you, you go you you can go off the deep end um, with a mindset of wanting credit and all that stuff, and and Joe just does a great job of orchestrating the 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 way we all communicate, and uh, you know you look at his staff with uh, Rex and Nej and uh, Sosi and all the all the guys that he has on his staff, they're, we're all we're all in unison. We we disagree a lot. Don't get me wrong. It's not like we agree on everything, but uh, but I think those open and honest discussions where we can disagree without um, without getting pissed at one another, um, I think it's healthy, and uh, and I think it's why we've been able to to have so much success over the last two years with bringing in the right guys. Uh, great seeing you again, and thank you so much for your time. And you oh, gave yeah. a little nugget out there that after the Hall of Fame game this year, that perhaps you'd be. Uh, working with another team again. These yeah, ho hopefully. You know, I, I do. I think you, you can get a lot out of them, especially, you know, if you're trying to save your guys from having to play in the uh, preseason game. 
uh, the next best thing is to have those open practices. They're they're a little bit more physical, and I get that part, but um, but that's part of training camp too. You've got to callous. But if we can callous in a way where we don't subject ourselves to injury, I think it's healthy. That's why I think those uh, uh, scrimmage or inter-squad practices are so beneficial. Thanks, Rob. Appreciate it.